Take a look at this. If I click on select a video source, I can click on screen and Google AI Studio can tell me exactly what to do step by step. Whether it's Google Sheets or DaVinci Resolve or any automation platform, it's almost like having an expert right by your side able to help you with anything. But you might be wondering, how can you get access to this right now for free? What kind of use cases is it great at and what does it fail at? And is this the death of YouTube tutorials? I actually quite like my job and I am never gonna stop. So I'm gonna test it on an easy task, a medium task and a hard task to do so we can figure out by the end, do you really even need to watch YouTube tutorial videos anymore? Let's get started. First, how you get access is to go to aistudio.google.com. This is completely free to use and they have a lot of features that I want to show you. Just click on go to Google AI Studio. Now that you're on the inside, it might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually a lot easier once I show you exactly what the different features does. I'm gonna show you a couple ones here today. The first one that I wanna show you that is the most quote unquote revolutionary, the one that is my favorite, is the stream real time. As you can see, the big difference here is that when you click on start recording, you can select a video source and that can be your screen. So I wanna go through three different examples where it's actually teaching me different stuff from easy to do to hard to do. So three examples, let's get started right now with number one. Click on video source, click on screen and I'll select the entire screen right here. Let's go. Hey, I've uh, never used Google Sheets before and I'm trying to create a Google Sheet from scratch. How do I do that? Okay, to create a new Google Sheet, you can go to the Google Sheets homepage and click the blank option at the top. Would you like more guidance on this process? All right, I think I just clicked the correct link. Am I on Google Sheets right now? Yes, you are on Google Sheets right now. You have a new untitled spreadsheet open. Do you want me to help you with anything else? Okay, so I added a few keywords in here, but I want to make it different color formatting where if it's a higher number, it's more green. And if it's a lower number, it's more a light green. How do I do that? Okay, I see you have a spreadsheet with keywords and their associated numbers. Have you already used conditional formatting in the spreadsheet? Nope. Okay, then to apply conditional formatting, first select the cells with the numbers you want to format, then open the format menu and select conditional formatting. Would you like me to explain the next steps? Okay, cool. I see single color and color scale. Should I be on the color scale? Yes, you're on the right track. Click on color scale to format your numbers with a gradient. Then you can select your colors for the min and max values. Do you want to select those colors? Yeah, what if I want the light green to actually be red? To change that, click on the color box next to min value and choose red. Does that work for you? Yeah, that works perfectly. Thank you. Great, I'm glad I could help. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, thank you so much. The example shows that if you don't have any experience in any software right now, you can actually start by using Google Studio and it can teach you the basics without even searching on YouTube or Google. But this one was pretty easy. So let's try an even harder example that it may not be able to do. I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve. Stop writing emails. Look at this. I have an AI that drafts responses for me right away based on my previous responses. And if you think that it's not going to sound like you, <laughs> this is different. Look, I go to any email. It's already draft. Whoops. Yeah, it even includes my sponsor rates. Look, we can do another one. Click it, scroll to the bottom where AI has drafted a really good response, edit it around a little bit, just like that, and send. Getting to inbox zero has never been easier and it's all due to Serif AI, the best way to escape from email jail. You can try it for free right now and it's going to learn everything about how you communicate, what your business does. It's the closest thing I found to an AI clone that writes like you. If you're still writing your own emails, do yourself a favor, click the link and try Serif AI for free and change how you do email forever. Thank you so much to Serif AI for sponsoring this section of the video. Now let's get back to the video. But this one was pretty easy. So let's try an even harder example that it may not be able to do. I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve. 
This could obviously be any video editor of your choice that you want to learn more about and how to do specific things. Let me show you the example that I want to do now. I'll select video source, screen, select the entire screen once again. And I'm not sure if it's going to be able to do this, but let's take a look. Hey, Gemini, can you see that I'm on DaVinci Resolve right now? Yes, I see that you are on DaVinci Resolve right now. Is there anything specific you would like me to observe? Yeah, so I basically want to do audio to automatic captions or subtitles for this intro section. How can I do that? Okay, to start, go to the workspace menu at the top of the screen and select captions. Do you see that? There is no captions in the top timeline here. You're right, my apologies. It seems I got the menu wrong. Instead, go to the timeline menu at the top, then select create captions from audio. Do you see that option? I see create subtitles from audio. Is this one the correct? Yes, that is the correct one. Click on create subtitles from audio and it will start generating subtitles from your audio. There's a bunch of settings here. Should I change this or just keep it default? Those are settings to adjust the appearance of the subtitles. If you're happy with the default appearance, you can leave them as they are. If you want to customize them, you can change things like the maximum number of characters per line or the number of lines. Would you like me to describe those settings in more detail? Oh yeah, it seems like it actually works. But uh, the text is uh, all white. How can I change the uh, appearance of the subtitles? To change the appearance of the subtitles, you'll want to go to the inspector panel on the right side of the screen and click on the subtitle tab. From there, you can adjust parameters such as the font, size, and color. Do you see that tab? Yeah, I was able to change it now, but I would also like to have some sort of drop shadow or a stroke around the text. Where do I find that? Okay, to add a drop shadow or stroke, you'll want to check the Customize Caption box above the Caption Style section that will reveal additional options below the position setting. You'll find a section called Stroke and another called Drop Shadow. Is that what you were looking for? I can't see it on the screen. Do I have to go somewhere else? You are correct. I apologize. It seems those options are located in the track tab of the inspector panel, not the caption tab. Can you click on the track tab and see if the stroke and drop shadow options are visible now? Yeah, I see the options now. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Yeah, now it's only applying to one of the subtitles, but can I make it apply to all of them? Yes, you can make the changes apply to all of them. To do this, select all the subtitle clips in your timeline, then make the adjustments in the inspector. This will apply the changes to all selected clips. Would you like help with selecting the subtitle clips? Yeah, there we go. I think I managed to get the subtitles for the entire intro. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It managed to do it. How I would get this information before is literally search on YouTube, go to a video, then scrub through the video until minute number four, where he shows exactly that tab in the timeline, automatic subtitles, and then I will go, oh, now I know. But I didn't have to actually check out a YouTube video or check out Google or anything like that to be able to get the exact change that I want in a very specific software. And DaVinci only added this maybe one or two years ago. So it's going to be interesting to see how often Google AI Studio is going to update. Say, for example, there is an update inside of DaVinci Resolve with new features and stuff like that. When is Google AI going to learn from that and then know exactly how to show you that or interact with the UI in all different softwares, not only DaVinci Resolve, but Unreal Engine or Unity. This opens up a whole new world of productivity because you can just talk to it and it sees your screen. But we have one more hard example. This is gonna be the hardest one of them all. Can it pass? But before that, comment down below AI tutorials if you want me to break down AI tools step-by-step step just like this. Also, while you're here, click on the subscribe button as well. Welcome to the family. Now, let's keep going. I'm gonna create an automation that triggers on when we get an email, ChatGPT is gonna draft a response for us and then we can choose to send that out or not. But can Google AI Studio do this? So I'm in Make and I want to create an automation that triggers whenever I get an email and it sends it to ChatGPT as a draft response and then I can edit that a little bit and send it out. Yes, you would need to search for the Gmail module 
in order to create an automation that is triggered by receiving an email. I see the trigger watch emails. Is that one correct? Yes, the watch emails trigger is the correct one to use for your desired automation. So I've set up my connection. The filter type is simple filter. And what do I put in this criteria here? Under criteria, you can choose all emails to trigger the automation for every new email you receive. Or you can choose only read emails to trigger the automation only for those emails that have already been read by you. Okay, I got you. Emails. Um, can you uh, tell me about the maximum number of the results? Should I keep that on one or have it more? Since you're looking to process each new email individually, it's best to keep that setting at one. It says choose where to start. And I'm not going to do from now on, I think I want emails after a specific date because I got an email yesterday that I actually want to reply to. So I'm going to choose 10th of March and I'll click on save. But uh, how do I set up the chat GPT module now? In the center of the screen, you should see a large plus sign. Clicking on that plus sign will open the add a module menu where you can search for the chat GPT module. Okay, I see a module. bunch of different modules that I can use. Which one of these should I use? You should use the create a completion module. This module is designed to generate text based on prompts or chats. Okay, I've added a connection and now I need to select a model. I'm not really sure which model is the best, but I would like something that is pretty cheap and doesn't cost that much. You could try using the model called GPAT 3.5 Turbo. This model is a good balance of cost and performance. Would you like me to explain the next steps? Okay, I see GPT 3.5 Turbo here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I believe I have to put a prompt in there. What could be a good prompt to put into a general email draft response bot? Yes, you are correct. You need to add a prompt to the messages field. A good prompt would be something like, write a short response to this email. This should give you a good starting point for the automation. After that, you can map the email content to be included in the prompt. Yeah, so I see a lot of different things on the side here, but I'm not sure exactly what is the email content. Okay, to map the email content, you need to drag and drop the text content item from the watch emails module into the message area. Do you see the prompt that I have here? Write a short response to this email and I have this module text content in the box itself. Is that correct? So yes, the text content part is correct. Can Care help with. to change the max uh, completion tokens or can I keep it at 2048? You can change the max completion tokens or keep it at 2048. What would you like to set it to? I'm just gonna keep it as is, I think. Would you like to save this setting? Okay, I've set up the two modules right now, so I'm just gonna click on run once. Is that all right? Yes, running the modules once is fine. All right, I'm gonna click on run, and it actually looks like it's running right now. We got a response as well, and ChatGPT was able to uh, write a result for me. So that's really cool, thank you. It looks like the workflow ran successfully and the OpenAI module provided a response based on the email. Is there anything else you'd like to do or any other questions? So that was a pretty good experience. It managed to do all the things that I wanted it to do. Well, that brings us to, is this the death of tutorials? And I think a little bit, yes. Even though I'm an AI YouTuber and I do tutorial videos, I'm also a learner and I really like to learn quickly and then share whatever I learned with you guys. And here is the big thing that I think nobody's talking about. And that's, yes, you can use AI to help you with clicking buttons and uh, asking it to do things for you and share things with you, but it's not going to come up with novel ideas itself. You kind of need a human to do that, kind of like we're mirroring our parents when growing up. If you're on a mission to do YouTube, for example, you'll probably mirror and get ideas and inspiration from other humans that are doing what you want to do. They show you how they did that and then you emulate what they did versus you know exactly what to do and then you ask Gemini, which I think many people don't even have clarity of what their problem is and what is the steps to get to the end destination. So because of that, we still need us humans giving those novel ideas, being out in the world, doing, trying, testing things, getting the result, and then sharing that with the community on YouTube so everyone can benefit from it. And you know what that means? 
whenever AI gets so smart that it can actually start doing the YouTube videos, actually moving the computer itself and getting great results and then sharing that with the world, I think that would be the moment in time where it's the end of tutorials. But until then, I'm going to keep finding the newest and the best AI tools and teach you how to use them. Subscribe for more content. Also check out our sponsors in the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. AI is crazy and all, but you are still the hero.